I was told that I could use just about anything to connect with the other side, that it didn't have to be a Ouija board. I was also told that you shouldn't do any of this unless you're damn sure you know what you're doing. My mother and grandmother told me this, so I was inclined to heed their warnings. There was never a time when I wanted to connect with the other side until my best friend's cousin died. At first, I was opposed to the idea of connecting to the other side. I could hear my family's warnings radiating in my ears. I was by no means damn sure what I was doing, but Tara was my best friend, and she was grieving. She was going to try with or without me, and for some reason, I thought it would be safer with me. She had made her own board, and I was a little shocked to see she put it together so quickly. But I wasn't surprised. I asked her when she did it. She said she'd been working on it before her cousin died. But she finished it the weekend of the funeral. She's my best friend, yet I had no idea she was working on that thing. Which is probably because she knew how wary I was around them. I didn't only believe in their power. I feared it. I know you're scared, she said. But I've done a lot of research and I know we're going to be okay. She didn't so much convince me as I couldn't say no. So, when do you want to do this? I asked. Halloween. Oh god, well, I'm committed now. Why Halloween? Do you think it raises your chances of reaching your cousin? Because it actually raises your chances of meeting anything, including things you really don't want to meet. But Tara was sure Halloween was best. Halloween night arrived and I made my way to Tara's house. I brought various protection crystals even though I knew damn well they couldn't actually protect me against anything inherently evil. We were basically about to open a door to anything and everything while just hoping for the best. I had a few rules of my own and since I had never actually done this before I was going to follow those rules because they came from people with actual experience. When I got to Tara's, she'd already set up her room to look like something straight out of the craft. The only light came from candles, and black sheets covered her curtains. She also, to my surprise, had a small Sony hand recorder. Apparently, she planned to record this session. There was a small pile of things sitting next to her, and the board was in the middle of a circle she'd created with various sized candles. The pile included a folded sweatshirt, keychain, some random jewelry, and one of those mini troll dolls with the fuzzy hair. And there was a photograph of Tara's cousin, Ari. Before we started, I told Tara to try to clear her mind as much as possible, that she needed to only be thinking about Ari and their connection. You need to think about any and all things Ari, and I'm going to do the same. She nodded her head. And I paused. Also, we don't want to communicate with anyone or anything else, right? If anything except Ari comes through, we say no thank you and move on, right? I looked at Tara for reassurance. Right, she agreed. Originally, I had planned to start, but we both agreed that Tara should be the one. She began by simply asking, Ari, it's Tara and Kat. Are you here? Both our palms were sweating, and the planchette felt slippery beneath our fingertips. But it wasn't just because of our sweat. The planchette was actually moving. Tara and I made eye contact the moment it happened, and my heart rate instantly increased. I couldn't believe something was happening, and I wasn't sure what to do next. The board navigated toward the letters I and then T, we have to try to remember these letters. We don't have anything to write with, I said. Then S, followed by M and E. It's me. Tara was instantly emotional, but she didn't take her hand off the planchette. She just wiped her tears with one hand and looked at me for confirmation. Did I think it was her? How could I be sure? All I knew was it didn't feel like her. It didn't feel familiar. I shook my head. No. 
But then the planchette started moving again. We hadn't asked the board anything else, but it was spelling something. Can I come in? I was almost ready to take my hand off the planchette because those are exactly the words you don't want to hear when using a spirit board or trying to connect with the other side. No. No, you cannot. I say aloud before Tara can say anything. I tell her, we don't want that. And she hesitantly agrees, but continues. Ari, can you just give me a sign that you're here? She grabbed a necklace from the pile next to her and started talking about the story behind it. That was the first time I learned Ari and Tara were raised together until age eight, when they had to move away from each other. That's when Ari's mom got custody of her again. Tara's mom had these silver heart friendship necklaces made for them, Half for Tara, half for Ari. Tara was holding both halves in her hand and full-on crying, but she kept her fingertips on the planchette. I too had tears in my eyes, which was a bummer because sad tears make my eyes burn, but not being able to wipe them away made it almost impossible to see what was going on. Ari, if you're here, just... Tara's cut off mid-sentence, but I didn't immediately understand why. Holy shit, Tara says quietly, almost a whisper. What? Did something happen? I didn't feel anything move. I am fervently wiping the tears away from my eyes best I can. The, the troll doll, it moved. Silence, then movement. The board had something to say, and it took a while. The first part was, can't stay followed by love you t silence to me it felt like whatever was occupying the space was now gone whatever connection that we'd made was temporary and was over i looked at tara waiting for her to respond and after a couple of minutes she looked up at me and said okay let's say goodbye the rest of the night, Tara was just buzzing. It was nice. I hadn't seen her like that since before Ari died. We stayed up all night watching horror movies and almost forgot about the recording entirely. It had continued recording long after we'd left the room. As we got ready for bed, we huddled around the recorder to listen. Throughout the session, there doesn't appear to be anything unusual captured until we get to where the troll moves. Just as Tara is cut off, a voice can be heard saying, How about this? Really quickly. It took us a long time to discern what the voice was saying, but we are 99% sure that's what it was, and Tara believed it was Ari's voice. Truthfully, I'm not entirely sure what we connected with that night. I do know that Tara received some genuine closure from the whole thing, and I was kind of amazed to experience anything at all. Though, I do stand by my rules when using a Ouija board, and I don't think that they're a toy. I also believe that they can be a valuable tool, if used with positive intentions and good practices. I'm definitely not encouraging anyone to pick up a board, but my personal experience showed me that positive things can come from making contact. And even though we are opening a door to just about anything, we do wield some control in that power. We don't have to engage with things we don't want to engage with. Just some food for thought. Happy Halloween, and thanks for reading. Halloween Ghost Scare I've always considered myself a logical person, never one to really believe in supernatural occurrences, or even find much entertainment in the idea of them. They weren't real, you know? Well, that all changed on one Halloween night, when I had the most unforgettable experience of my life, one that I already knew no one would believe. This is always the best time of year in my opinion. And this was the perfect Halloween night by all standards. The air was thick and foggy. 
The moon cast a glow on the streets, despite the dense fog that seemed to spoil up everything else. It was my first year trick-or-treating without my older brother. I was excited as it meant more candy for me. It also meant I could be the one to dress as a pirate. The jingle of my coin belts and the swish of my cape accompanied my every step. I certainly wasn't going to be sneaking up on anyone tonight. I wandered through the neighborhood, and as the fog grew less dense, I couldn't help but feel the excitement that comes with Halloween. There weren't many people left out and about, but the ones who were had bags filled at various levels, indicating how successful their nights had been. Sure, my costume was awesome, but my candy-gathering skills had proved to be kind of incredible. I really wasn't ready to end my journey, but I was starting to wonder where I could hold it all if I kept going. Then, just as I was about to call it a night, my attention was drawn to a figure that seemed to emerge from the shadows themselves. There was no path over there, yet here they were, moving with an ethereal-like grace. My curiosity was beyond peaked. How the hell were they doing that? I watched as they drifted through the now deserted streets. Their form, their form translucent, almost like the fog itself. The ghostly figure appeared to be a woman. Whatever she was wearing, it was aged, but it was also transparent, driven by an impulse I couldn't even understand. I followed the figure with my gaze, and soon my feet. My pulse raised with fascination and trepidation. Soon I realized with each stride, I would lose sight of her. Eventually, despite picking up my pace, I was only able to catch glimpses of the figure, usually when she drifted beneath the dimly lit streetlights. Just as I would start to think I was losing it, she'd appear again. And still, I had no idea why I continued the pursuit. It was as though her presence demanded my attention, that she somehow was coaxing me in whatever direction she was headed, towards something I probably didn't understand. As I continued to trail behind her, my brave facade began to slowly unravel, now replaced by an unease that felt as though it was crawling beneath my skin. What started as a whimsical pursuit now felt like a haunting dance between life and death, my heart pounding in sync with something unknown. Finally, I found myself approaching a normal-looking house. Its windows weren't shattered by time and neglect. Instead, it was just a home that looked empty and dark. There was a for sale sign posted in the front yard. But where was the woman? I thought I'd seen her. The figure walked towards the backyard. I wasn't sure I should follow. Before I could even decide, a woman's voice could be heard directly in front of me. It said, look out and instinctively I jumped back, away from the voice. It was like in that instance, I was jolted back into reality, and away from whatever translite state I had felt before. Suddenly, headlights and the sound of a honking horn, I twisted my body backwards, attempting to launch myself back toward the voice, and away from the oncoming car. Honestly, no idea if my efforts played any role in me, not getting smashed like a pancake that night. The driver swerved all the way to the other side of the road, so really it's thanks to them. As soon as I realized I was alive, I booked it towards my house on the sidewalk. I had lost some candy through the whole ordeal, but I kind of felt like I lost my mind, and that was more important at the time. When I came flying through the door, I remember my parents had been asleep on the sofa, and I'd surprised them awake. My dad and mumble yelled something in the process, but I didn't even speak to them. Just ran straight to my room, dog Elsie in tow. I was sure I'd seen something that night. She didn't scare me. At least I don't think she did. Everything that happened after seeing her is what really scared me. The house itself has never left my memory. But which route I took to get there. How I found my way back to my street. Also all mysteries to me. I was never able to find that house again. Though... I didn't really go looking for it either.